we are now ready for the conclusion of our chapter 15 video lecture. Our next topics are supply chains and supply chain management. When you think about supply chains, this is the sequence of linked activities that must be performed by various organizations to move goods from the sources of raw material to the ultimate consumer. So we're now saying, what is the process of getting goods from that wholesaler or manufacturer to you who the asset going to be the ultimate consumer? Supply chain management is the process of managing the movement of raw materials, parts, work in progress, finished goods, and related information through all the organizations involved in a supply chain, managing the return of such goods if necessary, and recycling materials when appropriate. Supply chains can be very complex and expensive. So let's talk more about this supply chain function. Here we have the suppliers' plants. Then you have the manufacturers, wholesalers, retailers, and then the consumer. This is known as the normal channel of distribution. When you include a supplier, now that's going to be known as your supply chain. Let's talk about logistics. Logistics. Getting goods to consumers efficiently. So how can we get the products from the supplier or the wholesaler to the consumer? So logistics is a marketing activity that involves planning, implementing, and controlling the physical flow of materials, final goods, ready information from points of origin to points of consumption to meet customers' requirements at a profit. So now we're saying that what if you wanted a brand new car that you're having designed? The logistics takes over to see what is the process for getting that car designed according to your specifications and getting that vehicle to you as the consumer. There are seven R's of logistics getting the right product to the right place, to the right consumer, at the right time, in the right quantity, in the right condition, and at the right price. So these are known as the seven R's of logistics. Let's talk about inbound logistics. What are those? Well, Inbound logistics focus on bringing raw materials, packaging, other goods and services, and information from suppliers to producers. That's known as inbound logistics. So now we talk about the handling of material. That's the movement of goods within a warehouse, from the warehouse to the factory floor, and from the factory floor to various workstation. So if we're looking at wood, steel, other raw materials, we're saying how we take those materials from the warehouse to the factory floor, from the factory floor to the various workstations, there's a process logistics in which that has to be handled. The logistics is as much about the movement of information as is about the moving of goods. So we're saying that there has to be planning in place information on how we're going to move products throughout the logistics system. Outbound logistics focus on managing the flow of finished products and information to business buyers and consumers. So how do we get our product to the consumers along with information about our actual products. Next we have reverse logistics. It involves bringing goods back to the manufacturer because of defects or for recycling materials. So if a product was sent out 
but the product did not meet the client specifications, what is our process for receiving the product back? That's known as reverse logistics. Third part of logistics is the use of outside firms to help move goods from here to there. So we'll look at the most convenient ways companies are going to move their products. We'll look at the different modes of shipping. Trains. Trains are great for large shipments. So we still use the rail system today. If the large percent of goods in the United States are actually shipped by rail. Did you all know that? Yes, most goods are shipped using the actual train system. Freight Forwarder is an organization that puts many small shipments together to create a single large shipment that can be trans transported cost effectively to the final destination. So what the freight forwarder does, it will take products from many different companies, put those products on the freight cost, assuming they're going to the same destination, and use that as a mode of transportation. Trucks are also goods for small shipments to remote location. Of course, there are certain places that can't be reached by train, so trucks are also goods for smaller shipments to location. Truck companies are used for widespread delivery. Okay, so here we have a picture showing a railing system. And again, railroads carry over a third of all goods shipped with the United States and are expected to remain a dominant transportation mode. So what are some of the advantages of shipping by rail? for both large and small producers. Please send me your response via email to the badge of using the rail as a mode of transportation. Okay? Water transportation is inexpensive for the slope. So now we're saying using boats as a form of shipping, it is inexpensive. However, it may take a while longer to receive your actual product. Now, just because uh, international travel, water transport is local as well as international, sometimes water transportation may be the only way other than shipping, uh, other than uh, airfare, to ship a product, say, from one country to another country. Pipelines are fast and efficient. Pipelines primarily transport water, petroleum, and petroleum products. Okay, so here we have a company, and what they're doing, they're transporting heavy raw materials like timber from one country to another. And notice that they're using a water system. So once the cargo has arrived at its destination, the ship must be unloaded and the logs transported to a processing plant. Question is, why is managing logistics process a key to the viable in some areas. So logistics deals with the transportation of goods from one source to another. And once again, it is our job to make sure that the logistic process is running smoothly. Okay? Other modes of transportation include shipping again. Air transportation is fast but expensive. Only a small proportion of shipping goes by air. The air freight industry is starting to focus on global distribution. So, of course, companies like FedEx, UPS, etc., they do use air transportation, but air transportation is not the uh, most conveniently used form of transportation. <clears throat> Excuse me, intermodal shipping is when you use multiple modes of transportation to complete a single long distance movement freight. So in this situation, it, they might begin on air and then it could be going from air to an actual truck to complete the actual shipment process. There are different types of motor shipping. Piggyback is when 
you put truck travelers on the back of place on, on trains. So once the train gets to a different certain destination, then the trucks take off. Fishy back is putting trucks placed on ships. So same process. Once the ships get to a certain destination, then the trucks do delivery. And birdie backing is when you put trucks on the backs of planes. Those are all known as intermodal shipping. This chart just shows the distribution based upon the most popular type of freight. As you guessed, trucks are the most popular type of freight. Trains next, pipeline ships. And then, as you see, under 1% of all products are being shipped by air. Okay, now once we receive the products, got to keep track of the storing functions. Companies must have goods available in various parts of the country ready to be shipped locally when ordered. So we have to make sure we have in place logistics, a storage function, and then tracking goods. Storage warehouses hold products for a long period of time. Distribution warehouses are used to gather and redistribute products such as package deliveries. They have a system for tracking goods. Radio frequency identification, known as RFID tags, are used to keep track of goods. So as goods are being shipped from one place to the other, there needs to be some type of tracking system to keep track of those different goods. Okay? This will conclude our chapter 15 video lecture. Now you should have a better understanding of the different modes used of distribution of process from marketing and intermediaries, wholesalers, retailers, etc. I hope you have enjoyed the chapter 15 video lectures. Bye bye.